Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 5th of May and we're going to do a video update on Bitcoin. So it's been a while and we've got a very important update today. Obviously, price is at astronomical levels right now. We're currently sitting at 57k. And the argument is, now that we're seeing price kind of stall in and around 60k, are we seeing price slowly roll over or is this just the cause that's building up here ready for the next blow off top to occur? OK, so these are the things we need to discuss in today's video. Some very, very important things that we will be discussing in particular. We'll be talking about this Fib projection here, which is generated from this high down to this low. And you can see we came into the 1.618 level very, very nicely. And this is where we are currently consolidating. So we'll discuss the significance of that one. We've got some very key pitchforks on the daily time frame. So there's this one that goes all the way back from this 2018 uh, low right here. And then we've got the first three pivots, as you can see, and we're currently finding support off the 0 0.5 line of the pitchfork. OK, so that's one daily pitchfork. This is another daily pitchfork, which we're following very, very nicely. And as you can see, we're just about pushing into the median line once more. So it could be a very positive sign to see us back above this median line which could be uh, very imminent indeed. So next, next after that, we've got some smaller time frame pitch folks. So this is on the hourly time frame. Just to try and time the move that is developing right now, you'll see the thumbnail to this video was in fact looking at this picture, in fact looking at this low, which looks to be significant. It looks like a significant low in my opinion. I can't see us coming down beneath this anytime soon. And to be honest, if it does, I would say Bitcoin is looking pretty weak if it were to come down lower than that. So that is pretty much a good invalidation point. So we'll be discussing these pitchforks also. And then on top of that, we've got the Camarilla pivots. This is on the daily time frame. Camarilla pivots are very, very useful for assessing Bitcoin. And you can see here time and time again, with these pivot levels are acting as wonderful support and resistance. And you can see at present, we're currently finding support off of the S3 of the daily Camarilla pivot. On top of that, we have then got the Bitcoin dominance chart to discuss. We basically rolled over, as you can see, a massive, massive rollover in the Bitcoin dominance. And this basically allowed for the altcoin rally. Uh, and it could have been anticipated. There was a big consolidation here in at the lower warning line support. And I was making the group very aware that, you know, if there were this were to break, you're going to see an altcoin rally. That's basically what we saw as it came down further and further and further. We're anticipating it coming down at least to the 50% level. We now sit at the 61.8% retracement. So is it time for a bit of Bitcoin resurgence or are we going to just head nicely down to the 0.786? So these are the things we can discuss in today's video. So if interested, then stay tuned. OK, guys, so we've talked about the key points that we're going to discuss in today's video. First of all, before we jump right in, I just want to say, obviously, it's been a long time since I did my last video. I am hoping to do more frequent videos. I know I keep saying it. And you know what? You, I think most of you know by now the reason why I've probably taken a good while. Obviously, that reason being uh, the newborn baby that we've got. So, you know, it takes up time and uh, I've got to prioritize things, obviously. Um, obviously, I do my regular updates for the group because it is an obligation that I've committed myself to. And yeah, I'm hoping as time goes on, you know, I'll have that more free time. And I'm, trust me, I'm not just going to leave you. I really enjoy doing these videos. I like sharing the information. I like putting it out there and discussing it and hopefully seeing the channel grow. So don't worry about me leaving this space anytime soon i will be throwing the updates out there when i'm able to and i should also mention at this moment and we'll discuss it in more detail at the end of the video i'm basically going to open up an aspect to my discord which currently is restricted to only members of the group and course members uh, but we're going to open up a part of the discord which is going to be open to the public and it's basically going to be a pitchfork library where you can all contribute the most significant pitchforks that you've identified and it's obviously it's then good for you as well to share that information and yeah, browse through it. So I'll obviously elaborate more on that at the end of the video and tell you where you can get the access link for that. All right, guys, so let's talk about Bitcoin. So the first thing I mentioned, obviously, was the FIB projection. So let's just plot this on the chart. So basically, FIB projections, the way they're drawn, you will take a FIB retracement tool, take it from the high that is, you know, the significant high down to the low. OK, and then you get your FIB projections going above the original points, which is these levels here. So we've got the FIB levels being 1.236, 1.382, 1.618. 
Okay, and I spoke about these levels in the past, potentially acting as key resistance levels where price could have potentially turned around. But obviously, we wait to see how price reacts at these levels. If it gets rejected, then obviously we look for the downtrend. However, if it fails to get rejected and it just consolidates, then we can look for opportunities to get back in on the uptrend. And you can see here, we ranged between the 1.236 and the 1.382 very nicely. Then we we managed to break it. So it only completed a corrective sequence down to the 1.236, found support, which allowed price to then trade into the next level, which was this 62K level. And you can see, again, what we're getting here, to me, it looks like consolidation beneath resistance, getting ready to break higher. Of course, could be wrong it could break down it could turn out to into could turn out to be distribution but for me crypto doesn't end with these slow rolling over tops okay it generally ends on a very tall spike in price and i still anticipate that is we're yet to see that okay i think we've still got a very tall spike ahead in bitcoin that is the nature of Bitcoin, that's the way the price moves. So I'd be very, very surprised if this turned out to be a top and it just rolled over like this. So I see this currently consolidating beneath resistance, this 62K level. And of course, the confirmation of that happening would be us getting back above 62K. But um, yeah, it looks like it could be very imminent uh, as it seems that we are completing a corrective sequence here, which in my opinion, yeah, it looks like it could very well have completed already. Okay, so that's the Fib projection tool that we've been um, plotting for quite a while now and then we've got a couple of pitchforks so here on the daily time frame some very key high time frame pitchforks so again pitchforks very useful just using three uh, major pivots so we've got our first second third and we're on the log scale always important to make sure you've got the right scale on your chart generally when you're looking at parabolic price action you want to use the log scale to hold up the price within the pitchfork and yeah, as you can see, the, it's respecting the lines very, very nicely. And I've mentioned to the group time and time again that, yes, we did see a bit of weakness here. And I was a bit concerned that this only went up in three waves, which allowed for another move down. But I mentioned I didn't really want to see us come beneath this 0 0.5 line, which is this green line here. OK, and as long as we hold on to that, then we're good. And it basically turned out that it held as wonderful support. We got a little bit of a wick beneath, but ultimately it held as wonderful support. And now if we zoom in and just take a look at this, it is all looking to me like, you can argue whether it's accumulation or distribution, but for me, this is looking like accumulation. It's a running type pattern. We've got a corrective move there, a bigger corrective move to the upside. And again, another corrective move down. It's looking like a running double three, in my opinion. I do think the low is in here and there is a good argument that there's a, a significant low in here prior to us targeting future all time highs, which would be taking out our 65K level. OK, so very key level going off this high time frame major pitchfork. And there is obviously another very key uh, pitchfork, which is this one right here again on the daily time frame. So not quite going back as far. Uh, but we've got it's basically of this recent impulsive move up. We've got the first, second, and third pivots. Again, the pitchfork has held incredibly well. We've tagged the upper warning line a couple of times, and then you can see we rolled over. And a lot of people would have been discussing about bearish divergence. Okay, bearish divergence just basically means you're losing momentum. You're not pushing up quite as high. You know, each high, yes, it makes a new high, but it takes longer to do it and it doesn't quite push up as high above the previous high as the, pre uh, as the previous moves did. Uh, and so it gives that rolling over effect. Now, the thing to remember is, one, you're on the log scale, which already gives it that kind of uh, impression anyway of that rolling over effect. But also when you see uh, something slowing down or losing momentum, it can just be a pause in the market. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna roll over. So you gotta be careful with bearish divergence. It doesn't always mean you're gonna roll over. It is just one of the key things you should look for if you are looking to for a reversal. But um, yeah, it can just signify a uh, symbol, sorry, it can just indicate a pause in the market and that's what i believe it is doing in this case now we currently sit at the median line yeah so i would ideally like to see us back above this it's currently acting as a bit of resistance but that would be a very nice show of strength getting back above there so that would be a very nice key indicator of strength um but 
as you can see, this pitch rock is very, very useful. Uh, so I, I do pay reference to this one. And yeah, as, as we get above the median line, I would then expect it to act as good support. And you can basically look at this pitch rock for looking for future targets. So going up at this trajectory, coming back into the upper median line, you're looking at around 77K in and around this point. And then if we're looking even higher, we're looking at in excess of 100K if we're going to tag our upper warning line again. Both regions, I think, are very, very reasonable. Obviously, personally, I trade between the lines. I'd be taking profits at 76, waiting to see how price reacts. You know, any consolidation rather than a rejection, I'd be looking to happily jump back in with long positions. But I'm all about taking profits at resistance. And so just in case there is a big rollover. OK, now I do think that what happens in Bitcoin will heavily depend on what happens in the stock markets. OK, um, as we've seen in the stock markets, we have got a bit of sideways movements. And uh, there's a lot of people that will talk about selling in May, coming back St. Ledger's Day, all of this. Um, yes, it is a historic theme that has been seen occasionally, um, but I wouldn't guarantee it it's going to happen like that uh it's never wise to bet against the stock market i have looked for tops in the past but there's never been that confirmatory move down that i wanted to see and until i see that in the stocks i'm always going to you know have that bias that we do continue higher and to be honest i think the next move higher could be a blow off top in in stocks in crypto so it's not something you want to be on the wrong side of it could be a very aggressive move to the upside but we have to be cautious obviously with coronavirus um creating that economic downward pressure and obviously what's going on in india right now has the potential to spill over to the rest of the world are the current vaccines uh, ready to or working against it we don't really know yet so it, there is that potential threat out there but Personally, I think the markets still have further upside to go. I really do. But yeah, another key indicator would be the stock markets in determining whether this Bitcoin rally continues or not. So that's this second high time frame pitchfork. Now, we, I just want to zoom in now. I want to come in on the, let's go down to the four hourly. And we'll talk about some key pitchforks that we've been monitoring in the group very closely. So we've got this one. Okay, so this is the pitchfork that held this current um, downward trend. First pivot, second, third. And this was actually identified by someone within the group. Very good find. Uh, basically, we we're looking at it as a W or XY coming down where this was your W. X wave triangle A. So it was an A, B, C, D, E. And then we came down for the next uh, Y wave and another three wave which moved down. Um, but yeah, that, those are your three pivots. So first, second and third uh, shift pitchfork. So following a corrective trajectory here, uh, finding support off of the lower median line. Confirmation of the breakout was getting above the median line. Oh, sorry, it's not confirmation. Getting above the upper median line was greater confirmation. This was a, an aggressive show of strength. Getting above the median line was a very good show of strength. Uh, and again, then we stalled at the upper warning line. And now we're above that also. OK, so. We're moving up very, very nicely. So I'm happy to say that we've broken this downward trend. Now, the question is, are we just correcting that downward move, getting ready for the next leg down? Or are we going into a new uptrend ready to take out 65K? In my opinion, if you haven't gathered already, I, I'm of the opinion that we are going to start taking out you know, these all time highs. But I would say invalidation would be coming back beneath this point, you know, 52K. I don't want to see us come beneath here. I think it's a very good support level, to be honest. And I would be, as I say, getting a bit worried if we were to come down beneath here. So then we have another pitchfork just homing in on the more uh, current price action. So we're now looking at this low, this high, this low. Again, a shift pitchfork is what we've been following. And you can see we were ranging between the upper median line and the lower warning line. This is where we found support. And we're now just hovering around the lower median line where again, you wanna see it hold as support. But as long as this holds, we look good. Uh, I'm seeing this as the a whole corrective wave here. Um, so this is your correction, that's your impulse. This is your correction, and then we head higher. So that's why personally, I wanna see this low hold. I don't wanna see this come back beneath 53K. That's my invalidation point. Um, so yeah, these are the key pitchforks that we're looking at. And then 
obviously I spoke about the Camarilla pivots, very, very key, in particular on the on the daily time frame. So let's just pull this up and have a good look. Uh, so Camarilla pivots, here they are. Uh, and you can see over the last three months been very, very key. So you can see R4 resistance here. And don't forget, each period here is one month when you're on the daily time frame. So for this month here uh, of March, we found resistance around the R4, support around the R3. And yeah, we, we finished the month just beneath the R4. So the market was still very much hadn't really decided where it's going to go. Then next month being April, we found resistance at the R3. Where did we come down to all the way down to the, the S4? But a really good show of strength at the end of the month was finishing the month above the S3. So I spoke about this in the group. I said, I really want to see us finish above the S3. And the next day, the final day of the month, that is exactly what we got. Very good show of strength. And then subsequently, as soon as we hit a bit of support in the following month, you know, based on the previous month looking very strong, it allowed bulls to jump in at this point off of the S3 and we got that big green candle today. Um, so yeah, another reason why I want to see this 53k level hold, we've got a very nice S3 support here on the Camarilla pivots. So yeah, that wraps up the pitchforks, the Camarilla pivots. I've talked about targets of 76k followed by 100k. That's a ballpark figure. Obviously, we're waiting for the um, pitchfork lines to confirm themselves first. Uh, but invalidation being 53k. So at, at present, all looking very, very strong. Okay, now at the beginning of the video, we did mention how I was going to discuss this new opportunity, um, which you'll be able to find access to the Discord uh, without accessing, you know, my paid for material, which would be the works or cryptology. Um, so if you head over to wave618.com and you can access my free uh, educational materials. So if you click on that, I'll show you what's involved in this. So if you then scroll down, you'll find the curriculum. So you've got your Discord invite here. So if you want access to it, sign up to this. As I say, it's free. Um, and your Discord invite is in there. So you'll only have access to certain a certain part of the Discord. So it's really the Pitchfork library, which I think will be uh, it's a new thing, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it will uh, do well. I think it will be useful. Um, but here also I will just mention, obviously you've got my Elliott Wave PDF, which has been useful for many people. All my Elliott Wave videos are here also. Uh, we've got a few limited offers that we do. And on top of that, you've got a few other bits of educational material. You've got your, your candlesticks and gaps. You've got the patterns. Um, so these are like PDFs really to take a look at. And yeah, then you got a sample of cryptology if you wanted to check that one out also. So that's roughly 60, 67, 68 minute video. Um, so that's all there. So yeah, I'm quite excited to discuss that. So if, if you, you either go to wave618.com to find all of this or you can just um, click the link in the YouTube video in the description. So you can check that out there. So I hope that has been useful and I hope to see you within the Discord. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up now. So take care.